so far we have seen fundamental equation of SHM as a equals to minus omega square x and velocity as a function of x. Now this time our aim is to find position of the particle as a function of time. Write down the heading. Find out, find out position of the particle from its mean position, position of the particle from its mean position as a function of time, as a function of time. Now, you know that we cannot use Newton's equations. We cannot use s equals to ut plus half a t square because these things require constant acceleration and for us acceleration itself is a function of position and therefore we will write v as dx by dt this is basically kinematics only instantaneous velocity is what dx divided by dt which is omega times root over a square minus x square. Now we have to integrate this thing. We have to remove d and removing d you know is called integration. And for that you should move same type of variable onto the same side. So this is x, this is x and therefore let's cross multiply this thing. It becomes dx upon root over a square minus x square which is omega times dt. That's the basic step for integration. dx upon root over a square minus x square is coming omega dt. Now to integrate this part what is the integration of this thing? dx upon root over a square minus x square Either you can remember the direct result. Direct result is sine inverse x upon a. How do we arrive at this? We'll see there. But first, let's integrate this part. Omega is constant. Integration on dt is t plus constraint of integration, which is phi dx upon root over a square minus x square. Integration of this part is sine inverse x upon a. Omega is a constant. Integration of dt is t plus constant of integration. Instead of taking c, we have taken phi. Why? You will understand it. But now first understand how do we develop this thing. It's just for your own interest. If you learn this style of maths, it will ultimately benefit you. There is a technique which is called integration by substitution. Now, what is this technique, integration by substitution? It says that if I take x as a sine theta, I will replace x or substitute x with a sine theta and why would I do this so that we can integrate this function we can convert it into a form which is a known form right now it's a unknown form we have no idea what the integration is it's not a standard function but once I use this substitution for this type of integration you will see the advantage x equals to a sine theta look at the denominator root over a square minus x square uh, root over a square minus x square it is what a square minus a square sine square theta uh, you know what this is this is simply a cos theta Take a square common, 1 minus sine square theta is cos square theta under the root, it becomes simply a cos theta. Now this a cos theta is what the denominator part which is root over a square minus x square. 
if you look at this x equals to a sin theta, then you also get this information. If I ask you what is dx upon d theta, what is differentiation of x with respect to theta, then it will be what a, what is differentiation of sin theta cos theta. Differentiation of sin x with respect to x is cos x. Differentiation of sin theta with respect to theta is what cos theta. With these things, your left hand side, this left hand side is now dx. Numerator is what? dx. What is dx? dx is a cos theta into d theta. So this is a cos theta into d theta. Numerator part. What is the denominator? Denominator is what? a cos theta. So this is only a cos theta. So this whole thing is now in this form. A cos, A cos cancelled and you are simply left with D theta. This is the advantage of integration by substitution. Unknown form, you have converted it into a known form with the help of integration by substitution. Now, what is integration of dx, x? So what is integration of D theta? That is what? Theta. Now what is theta? In here, x is a sine theta. If x is a sine theta, then what is sine theta? Sine theta is x upon a. Sine theta is x upon a. If sine theta is x upon a, then what is theta? Theta is sine inverse x upon a. That's how you arrive at this step. Now, you don't have to worry about this thing. If you are interested, you can remember this technique. Otherwise, simply remember this part that dx upon root over a square minus x square, its integration is given by sine inverse x upon a omega t plus phi. Now, how do we remove inverse? To remove inverse, we'll shift sine to that side and it becomes x upon a which is sine of omega t plus phi. When you move sine to this side, it becomes what? Inverse. When you move it to this side, it becomes sine theta. Same here. When you move sine inverse to this side, you get sine omega t plus phi. So we need x. This x is coming. X is coming a sine omega t plus phi. This is x, position of the particle executing simple harmonic motion as a function of time. What is phi? Constant of integration. We will calculate its value. But why did we choose phi? Inside sine, we always use what angles? Sine 30, sine 60, sine 90. So just to represent an angle, we have taken constant of integration as phi. If you wish, you can take it as C also. But remember that C represents what? An angle. Now, this x equals to a sine omega t plus phi is called general equation of SHM. general equation of s h m by choosing different scenarios which will decide value of phi we will get specific relations between x and time so these are three important things in simple harmonic motion we started from this a equals to minus omega square x which is a fundamental equation Based on that, we developed v equals to omega root over a square minus x square. And now with the help of this, we have developed x as a sine omega t plus phi. Now, go down this much and then we will go and find values of phi. Go down this much.
Now let's uh, see special cases of this x equals to a sin omega t plus phi. Or let's find out values of phi. And for that, we'll take case 1. What is case 1? Case 1 says that object at the beginning at t equals to 0 is at its mean position. At t equals to 0, x is what? 0. Write down the case 1. At the beginning of motion, at the beginning of motion, object is at its mean position. At the beginning of motion, object is at its mean position and is moving towards positive amplitude and is moving towards the positive amplitude. So we know that uh, we draw a path like this, object goes this way, then moves like this. Remember, this is what a one dimensional path like this. All the time object is moving along this line. In this direction, then coming back, moving this way and then coming back. Just to understand things a better way, we have shown the path in this form. For case 1, object is at this position. At the starting, object is at the mean position. You know that this line, it represents mean position. And this point is called x equals to plus a. That's the positive amplitude. So the beginning object is at the mean position. Now, this equation says, if you have got time and if you have got x, then you can easily calculate what? Phi. And therefore, let's put these values in this equation, which is the general equation. In general equation, when you put these values, x is 0, x is 0 when t is 0, a sine phi x is 0 when t is 0, you get 0 equals to a sine phi, which means sine phi is what? 0, which means phi is 0. That's your phi. If this is your phi, then x, it becomes now a sine omega t. Most of the time you will see simple harmonic motion in this form x equals to a sine omega t. But what is x equals to a sine omega t? Remember, this is relationship between position and time when at the beginning object is at mean position. So this is your x equals to a sine omega t. Once we have defined x as a sine omega t, this equation relates v with x. But we can now find v as a function of time also. Either you can put x in this equation, you can do that. But much better way will be this. We have found x as a sine omega t. How do you define v? v is dx by dt. Differentiate this thing. What is differentiation of sine? Cos. And then you need to multiply with coefficient of t that is omega. So dx upon dt will give you what v a a sine its differentiation is cos coefficient of t multiply the whole thing now, what is a omega a omega 
you know was what maximum velocity let's represent it with v naught then you got v as v naught cos omega t what is v naught v naught is maximum velocity and you know that maximum velocity is found at mean position so for case 1 what is x a sin omega t what is v v not cos omega t now let's go and differentiate v also so when you differentiate v you will get what a what is a a is dv by dt so a is dv by dt differentiate this part a omega what is differentiation of cos minus of sine omega t this is differentiation of what cos cos minus sine omega t but again you need to multiply with coefficient of omega so you need to multiply this part with coefficient of omega that makes it what omega square again differentiation of cos is what minus sine omega t multiplied by the coefficient omega into omega that becomes what a omega square now look at this part what is a sine omega t a sine omega t a sine omega t is x which means we can write this thing as minus of omega square multiplied by a sine omega t which is x can you see that we have arrived back to that position where we started from this was the fundamental equation a equals to minus omega square x we use integration to reach this position again use integration to reach this position now if you move backwards differentiate it you will get velocity differentiate it you will get what acceleration that's what is happening we have got this equation differentiate it you will get velocity differentiate it you have got what acceleration a equals to minus omega square x we'll learn the advantages of this technique later but as of now we have found relationship between v and t x and t when object starts from the mean position now let's understand these values first when you are at the mean position right here at this position t is 0 t is 0 let's put p 0 what is sine 0 0 that gives us x equals to what 0 at the mean position that is origin your x is what 0 and if i ask you what is velocity at this point at this point means when time is what 0 if you put t0, what is cos 0? 1. That gives you v as what v0. That means when object is at this position, its velocity is v0, which is the maximum velocity. And that maximum velocity you know is what? A omega. I hope you understand the case 1 part. You will understand case 1 further when we go for case 2 but first note down this much look at case 2 case 2 says that at t equals 0 object is at positive amplitude Write down case 2. At the beginning, object is at positive amplitude. But basically, it means let's understand this thing with the help of this pendulum. Now, in case 1, it was at this position when t was 0. But remember, it was not at rest. Now, it is not at rest, it will be much more clear with the help of this. Let's look at this simple pendulum. Now, somebody is oscillating this thing. 
Now, during this oscillation, an observer starts his stopwatch when this pendulum ball is at the mean position. When it is at the mean position and is going for positive amplitude, at that moment he starts his stopwatch. In that case, he will write x equals to a sin omega t. When I say at the beginning, it doesn't mean that it should be at rest. It is oscillating like this. And you know that in case one, when it was at the mean position, it can never be at rest. At mean position, its velocity is what? Maximum. So, an observer, he starts his stopwatch when this ball is passing the mean position for the positive amplitude. Now, in case two, we have a second observer. The second observer starts his stopwatch when this ball is found at the positive amplitude. So, it is oscillating. For observer 1, stopwatch starts when it is at the mean position. For observer 2, stopwatch starts when ball is at the positive amplitude. You can develop so many other conditions for it. But, in case 2, so write down case 2, at the beginning, object is at positive amplitude. At the beginning, object is at positive amplitude. Which means what? This is the path of the object. This is the main position. But when time is zero, when time is zero, object is at x equals to a. This is the position of the object at the beginning. Now, from this position, it's going to move like this. And then it will execute what? Simple harmonic motion. T0, x is a. Put these values in this equation. How do you put these values? x is what? a. a sine 0 plus 5. x is a, t is 0. This gives us sine 5 as 1. a cancel, sine 5 is coming 1. If sine phi is 1, that means phi is 90 degrees or pi by 2 radians. Once you got phi as 90, x becomes a sine omega t plus 90. Notice sine 90 plus theta. Sine 90 plus theta is what? Cos theta. And this gives you x equals to a cos omega t. For case 2, relationship between x and time t is given by x equals to a cos omega t. For case 1, it was x equals to a sine omega t. Now, we can go for v also. v is dx by dt which is coming a differentiation of cos is minus of sine omega t multiplied by omega which you can write as v minus of v naught sine omega t and before going for acceleration let's understand these equations at t0, what is x? a. Put this value in this equation. When t is 0, what is cos 0? Cos 0 is 1 and therefore x is coming a. x is coming a. But you know that object is at the amplitude. If object is at the amplitude, then for the second observer, its velocity, just when he starts his stopwatch, velocity of the ball is what? 0. At this point, you know that 
velocity is zero. That's what is happening in this. What if you put t zero and sine zero is what zero? V is coming zero. And now look at the negative sign. If ball starts from this position, then it has to move in this direction. This is what left. For left, you see a negative sign. That's how this differentiation helps you in finding the negative sign. If you use omega root over a square minus x square, then you may skip the negative sign because many times you will go for root and then they forget the plus minus meaning. That's why we prefer differentiation when we go from x to v. Now, once you have v, you can also find a. What is a? dv by dt. dv by dt is what? Minus of a omega minus of a omega sin omega t. Its differentiation is cos omega t multiplied by omega that makes it omega square. Now uh, a cos omega t, a cos omega t is what x. This gives us a as minus omega square x. Again, we have arrived at the fundamental equation of simple harmonic motion. So this is your x as a function of time. This is your v as a function of time when object starts from positive amplitude. Now, as a practice, you should go for case 3 and case 4. Write down these cases. You should develop these cases on your own. For case 3, we will say that object is at mean position, but is going towards the negative amplitude. For this position, your x will be what? Minus a. So when this ball, and the ball, it oscillates like this. Case 1, you found it here, it was moving this way. Case 2, it was at this position. Case 3, it is back at the mean position, but is going for the negative amplitude. And in case 4, you will find the object right here at the negative amplitude. Write down case 3. In case 3, object is at the mean position. In case 3, object is at the mean position and is moving towards negative amplitude. And in case 4, and in case 4, object is at positive amplitude at the beginning. When you say it is at mean position at the beginning, it is at the amplitude at the beginning. Put down this case 2 and develop case 3 and case 4. Now let's see how to use these equations. And for that, put down a question. An object starts from mean position. An object starts from mean position. After what time? After what time? It will reach half of the amplitude. After what time it will reach half of the amplitude? Question says that at t0, x is 0. Object starts from the mean position. Remember, it doesn't mean that v is 0 because v at this instant will be maximum, which is a omega. So object is moving towards half of the amplitude position, which is this. Right here, your x is what? a by 2. And we need to find time which this object takes to reach this position 
starting from the main position. So you can pause the video and you can find the time yourself or you can see the solution. Now when an object oscillates, if this is T0, then this is T by 4. Total time to complete one oscillation is what capital T, time period. And therefore from this to this, it will take T by 4. At this position, time will be another T by 4, that is T by 2. For this position, time will be 3T by 4. And when you are back at the mean position, time is what? T. Something like this. When it is oscillating like this, then this is T by 4, another T by 4, T by 4, T by 4. That completes one oscillation. So if this is T equals to 0, then this is T equals to T by 4. It is at the amplitude. Another T by 4, time becomes T by 2. It is at the mean position and is going for the negative amplitude. Another T by 4, time becomes 3T by 4. Object is found at the negative amplitude. Another T by 4, it is back at the mean position and is moving towards positive amplitude. One oscillation is complete. Started from this position, going for positive amplitude and is repeating same thing it should not repeat the position it should repeat everything for example you cannot say that started from mean position came back to this and oscillation is complete no when it started from the mean position it was going for positive amplitude after this half oscillation it is at the mean position but is going for negative amplitude and therefore it is not repeating its motion completely it repeats that after capital T time. So, now from this to this, what is this position? This position is x equals to a. So, when you say that from this to this, from mean position to amplitude, it takes t by 4 time. Then from mean position, to half of amplitude time should be t by 4 divided by 2 which is t by 8 from this position to this position time is what t by 4 for half of that time is what half of this which is t by 8 many a times people go for this but this is wrong Think about it. Why is this wrong? In simple harmonic motion, you know that when an object is at the mean position, its velocity is maximum. And this velocity is continuously decreasing as it approaches amplitude. Which means, in the first half, in the first half, a by 2, this is the second half a by 2 from this to this in the first half object is fast and the second half object is slow that means for both these halves time will not be same and therefore you cannot simply divide by 2 that is not valid it's moving with a omega at this point and when it reaches this point, you know its velocity is what? Zero. It is slowing down and therefore for the first half and second half, it cannot take equal times. Then how do you decide time for this? Now, question says, find out time, x is given. An object starts from its motion from main position. That means we are discussing case one. And for case 1, for case 1, you know that x is what? A sin omega t. Which means what? If I provide you x, 
you can go for t. What is x? At this point, x is what? a by 2. Let's put x as what? a by 2. This is a sine omega t. a and a cancel. Sine omega t is coming 1 by 2. If sine omega t is coming 1 by 2, then your omega t is what? 30 degrees. 30 degrees or pi by 6 radians. Now what is omega? Omega is 2 pi upon t. 2 pi divided by capital T multiplied by t is what? Pi by 6. Pi and pi cancel and time is coming t by 12. So in t by 12 seconds, this object will reach half of the amplitude starting from its mean position. Now, the second part, write down the question. Note on this and then write down the next question. Object starts from positive amplitude. Object starts from positive amplitude. In what time it will reach? In what time it will reach x equals to a by 2? In what time it will reach x equals to a by 2? I try to find the answer. If you cannot, then come back and see the solution. So this time, object starts from this position. At t0, question says that x is what? a. Object at the beginning is found at the amplitude. So we did have found at the amplitude. Then for the second question, for the second question, we will use x as what? a cos omega t. x equals to a cos omega t. Because question says that object starts from the positive amplitude. Now, when this object moves and is found at this position, now when it is at this position, remember, x is not minus a by 2. You're still on the right hand side. Your x is what? a by 2. So time from this position to this position, we need to calculate that. We need to find this time. From this to this. This is x equals to a cos omega t. You will put x as what? a by 2. a cos omega t. This gives you cos omega t as 1 by 2, which means omega t is 60 degrees, 60 degrees or pi by 3 radians. Now what is omega? Omega is 2 pi upon t multiplied by t is what pi by 3 t is coming t by 6. That means from this point to this point, this object will take what time? t by 6. Now, we could have answered t by 6 without using second case equation with the help of this answer only, which we have learned in this part. From this position, to this position, time taken is t by 12, time taken is t by 12. This is coming from question number 1. From this position to this position, time is what t by 12. From this position to this position, time is what t by 4. And therefore, if this is known, 
this is known you can easily calculate time from half of the amplitude to amplitude time from half of the amplitude to this position is same as that from this position to this position because they might look different but basically it's a backward journey it started from this position is at the half of the amplitude and then goes for a from a by 2 to a is same as that from a to a by 2 because look at this it's a symmetrical motion on this side as well as on this side this a by 2 and this a by 2 they are not identical this a by 2 and this a by 2 they are not identical in the first a by 2 it is moving fast in the next a by 2 it slows down and then when it comes back again slow and fast so for time between this and this position we can directly use what this time is t by 4 minus t by 12. What is t by 4 minus t by 12? This is t by 6, which is the answer for the second question. Now, this question can also be asked in this form. An object is executing simple harmonic motion. First half, first half of the amplitude it covers in T1. Second half of the amplitude it covers in T2. From mean position to A by 2, it takes time T1. From amplitude from A by 2 to amplitude, it takes time T2. Then find out ratio of T1 and T2. Now those who think that this A by 2 and this A by 2 they are same. They write their answer as 1 is to 1. But you know that the answer is not correct. What is T1? From this point to this point, time is T by 12. From this point to this point, time is what? T by 6. So this ratio is coming 1 is to 2. Ratio is coming 1 is to 2. Put on everything.